It's Conduit News Radio with Paul Harrell. Uh, I want to welcome back to the program. We have State Representative Charlotte Douglas is with us. Charlotte, welcome to the program. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Yes, ma'am. Good morning to you. Now, you are the State Representative for District 75, correct? I am. So can you kind of tell us geographically where that is? That starts in the area around Mountainburg, Arkansas. It comes down around Mulberry and Dyer and then crosses the river and takes in Lavaca and Greenwood. Okay. Wow. All right. Well, um, <laughs> <laughs> that is... Uh, yeah, well, you know, we, we got listeners across the state, and so when, sometimes, like, I get a criticism, like, District 75, and they're like, Paul, no one knows where that is. So I just... That's I try, right. I try to at least tell people that where, where you guys are actually from. Okay, yeah, so... You, tell us, there was a, a a thing that happened last week, uh, and I believe it was in the Special Language Committee, and yes. I, I, I wanted to know if you could walk us through what you witnessed, and Senator Brian King, of course, was there trying to, you know, get a proposal passed that would have done what, in, in your opinion? Mm -hmm. Well, what he was proposing was to um, move the... Uh, those that are eligible for Arkansas work over to traditional Medicaid. And uh, he had done the research on it, and it's very obvious that it would be less expensive to the state to serve that population under traditional Medicaid. And this trend is being, you know, we would just be following a trend that many, many other states have chosen to do it this way. So uh, he had proposed this. Uh, he gave DHS a, a, a year to be able to get a waiver, to be able to move this population. And the beauty of his program is that the state's responsibility under moving this population would have been the same match as what they currently have under Arkansas Works. So essentially, in my opinion, you know, there would be, you know, would be a harmless move to, to do that. And we would just pay for any services that are rendered instead of having to pay these exorbitant premiums every month to a third party insurance company. Yeah, and I, I agree with you. The uh, asking for the waiver, you know, for the 90 10 match, just to move everybody over to traditional Medicaid is reasonable because the states that went ahead and expanded Medicaid without involving Blue Cross Blue Shield and making them rich, uh, mm -hmm. they that's what they did, and they got the 90-10 match as well. I mean, that was what the original plan was under Obamacare. And at this point, you know, you, you just got to look at how much this is costing us. And, and we, we've got yes. no money for roads. We've got, yeah. you know, tax increase proposals. And we've got tax increases that have happened, and it's just, yes. it's, it's, we've got a, we've kind of got a budget crisis, I think, in the state. What do you think? I, I agree. And, you know, why are we having to quibble over giving, you know, the transportation department money to fix the potholes in our, in our roads? Um, it's because of this program is just sucking the life out of the state. It's mm -hmm. growing twice as fast as education spending and all of the educators uh, you know all of my schools are fearful that they won't have the money that they need you know to educate our kids uh, when you know where are tax increases going to come or tax uh, cuts going to come from if we are paying this much money for this population that is a working population it's not your frail it's not your children, it's not your pregnant women, it's not your elderly. It is a working population that we are giving free insurance to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they're supposed I mean they're supposed to be working. And I know some do, but I mean a lot don't. And that's the but the age is they, they we're talking about able-bodied folks. Um, we're talking with state representative Charlotte Douglas and um, I, I would like to get so Senator King's it failed. Senator King's uh, proposal here here failed last week so kind of walk yeah. us through okay. what was there any discussion 
It was in the special language committee or the subcommittee on joint budget. So what exactly happened? Right. Well, he uh, gave his proposal, uh, very articulately explained, you know, just moving that population, keeping the match. And he had one question, I believe. And uh, then when the question, it looked like there was, you know, not going to be any more discussion, I called for you know, a motion to accept his proposal, and then there was a silence in the committee. And there was no one that wanted to step up and second that so we could get it out of committee and over move it over to joint budget. And, you know, what I grieve over that's happening at the state level and I don't blame as much the people on the committee as I do just a um, a culture of this ship has already sailed, there's nothing we can really do. And that is pervasive up here because they don't understand the numbers of why this needs to end. There's a lack of transparency. You know, leadership is not... Uh, bringing this to the table so that we can discuss it. And so there was no second. So it, it died on the table and did not get to advance. Mm. Okay. So, and re- so there was, you know, we could expunge the vote or we could, you know, do something like that. But again, it would take a second to do that. And, uh, I, you know, that did not look like it would happen. Yeah. All right, so to recap, uh, State Representative Charlotte Douglas, she was the only one, and she makes a motion to pass. There is no second, so they don't even they don't even consider it. Uh, for, for our uh, uh, viewing audience, we, we do have a list up of the special language subcommittee, joint budget, uh, the voting members present there. And uh, I think you're right, State Representative Douglas, because as far as the leadership goes, uh, the operative word there would be uh, lead, would be leading. And, and you've got, got to, okay, so there is leading going on, but in which direction? And there seems to be no interest in undoing what I think many Republicans that I would mm-hmm. kind of call establishment Republicans have kind of attached their political futures to this, quote, success of this program. And it's like, how, why are so many politicians down there that would camp, camp, campaign as being conservatives, why are they fighting tooth and nail to keep a socialist program from a socialist president? Do you, do you have any answers for that? Well, at the very beginning, and it was a brilliant strategy, um, you know, from leadership uh, under, under BB, but it was our first year to have a slight majority, and we could have defeated this private option, but they sold it as a Republican answer to Obamacare, and that eased people's conscience about voting this in because, you know, we were being picked off one by one for our vote and no telling what people were getting for their vote. And, you know, you were able to go back home and say that this was the all this was the Republican alternative. Mm-hmm. It was not, and we know that, but it was it was easy to soothe your conscience by saying this was the Republican alternative. Yeah. So I think that's kind of where that went off the rails as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, and, and we were recovering from it ever since. I mean, uh, earlier in the broadcast, I was playing. Well, there's no recovery. Yeah, we're 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 suffering from it. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly yeah. right. So, yeah, yeah. It, it's yeah. I, I was playing a video earlier uh, in the first hour of the program. We played uh, uh, at the time Senator Lamro. He had just been selected as the president pro temp of the Senate, and it was the first day of session 2013, and he's talking about medicaid and he's talking about how you know we've got to be respectful when we have this debate i know we've got to be respectful and it seems Mm -hmm. i mean i i I find it difficult um and and you're very respectful and you're very articulate and i really appreciate your voting record uh and and being a conservative but it just seems 
at some point we get down to it and they say, you know, well, you guys are not the conservatives that that. Uh, that you that you claim to be you know in in doing this and it becomes very awkward and i think it's i think it's divided the republican party i think the divide continues today and um Mm -hmm. you know and and when people found out by the way that it wasn't the republican alternative they we just Mm -hmm. changed the name to arkansas works instead when people found out private option was obamacare it's like okay well change the name arkansas works and i feel like i feel like that's uh I don't know. It's just sad. The whole situation is very sad well, to me. It is. It is. Because why would you want a program that is kept at 48 in overall health? That, you know, it's costing us billions of dollars. Um, it, uh, you know, the, the people on this, you know, we, it was sold to tell us that they're not going to use the ER and they were going to get, a, you know, a, a, their own personal physician. And they're five times more likely to use the ER now. Uh, premiums have more than doubled. And everybody in Arkansas that has had their premiums double or increase or changes in their coverage, it's because of this program. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can go back to this and understand that it is costing everybody to keep this population on free insurance. Yeah. And it's costing everybody in the state. You and I, we're paying for it. Do you? Uh, we were just talking with uh, your colleague, uh, uh, State Representative Dan Sullivan, and uh, yeah. he was talking about how the DHS budget will come up at some point to, uh, this week in the fiscal session. So I'm just curious, do you do you have a feel for how the chamber is going to go on that? Do they have the votes in the House? I think they have it in the House. Okay. Um, I don't, I, I, but but I'll tell you this, I, I think there are a lot that are saying, you know, maybe, you know, I'm not sure how I'm going to vote, um, and sometimes they're holding their vote to broker a, you know, something on, like maybe the pharmacy issue. Uh-huh. Yeah. That, but that's I'm, true. I'm not sure that they're really staunchly against the, the DHS as much as they are just brokering a vote. Mm-hmm. Well, you but know. But I think they've got the, the votes in the House, probably. Okay. Well, we've seen all this before. And, you know, going back to 2013, you know, you mentioned who knows what people were getting. You know, uh, I always go back to Richard Womack, who came out on record and said he was offered a bribe. And, and that's when he f- knew for sure he was voting against the program once he realized the links they were willing to go to try to get mm-hmm. this. And it's a and, and it's a two billion dollar windfall uh, for for, mm-hmm. you know, Blue Cross Blue Shield. And, and, and that's a lot of money. And it's just uh, the machine. You, go ahead. If you look at it, uh, you can uh, there are, you know, the people that care about looking at this have determined that there is a 20% profit built in to the premium that they are getting paid. So if we took that 20% out, we could easily pay for this program. I mean, that's 20% of our cost right there is going to Blue Cross Blue Shield. Um, So it's easy to find the money. Those that really want to be transparent and do some research on this, it, it, it would be an easy vote for us all to say, yes, Senator King, this was a, a brilliant way to solve this problem. But because we lack leadership on this, we lack transparency, mm-hmm. um, you know, there's there's no appetite uh, right now. Everybody just wants to shove it under the, the rug and hope, you know, that it is going to correct itself or, you know, we're going to get out of this mess somehow. And I fear that it's going to be through taxes. Mm-hmm. Yep. And uh, the people of the state are not going to be happy with that. And they understand it's because we would not listen to people like Senator King and make the changes that we needed to make. Um, you did come out on Facebook uh, with very kind words about uh, Senator Brian King deciding to seek re-election uh of course uh, going to be a primary state representative bob ballinger uh you know he's running for that seat now so why do you support uh senator brian king for re-election uh, senator king is a good legislator he does what we are all sent down here to do and that is to do our homework it's not just to sit in that chamber 
and ask our neighbor, well, how are you going to vote on this? How are you going to vote on this? No. He gets in there and does his homework and figures out what needs to be done on an issue. He is successful down here. Uh, people are going to be are going to disparage him being uh, angry or a bully, but no, that's not it. He's frustrated because he knows the truth, and he cannot get leadership to listen or act on it. And um, he's, you know, got courage, and and very few legislators have the courage that he has to stand up and. You know, bring truth to to an, a hard issue. Mm-hmm. So I support him because I can trust him to do the right thing and not take a payoff. Uh, you know, not you know broker his vote, and that's what I think the people of our district will want. Mm. Well, State Representative Charlotte Douglas, it's always great to talk to you. I appreciate your stance uh, on liberty and everything that you're doing down there, too, because you also do your homework. And um, best of luck to you in the fiscal session. Just let me know uh, anything I can do to get the information out there to the people. Thank you for what you're doing. Uh, you're, a, you're, a, you're a light in the darkness. You're a, you know, a voice <laughs> for, for the, the people. And thank you for what you're doing with your program. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Be safe. Have a good day. Yes, ma'am. Bye. Folks, we're going to take a break. Uh, uh, really always a pleasure to talk to Representative Charlotte Douglas. When we 